الله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم من بعد. So this is an appeal, actually, to those people who consider themselves internet sheikhs and muftis. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all with, and grant us tawfiq and guide us and bless us all with the amun nafid wa skantayib wa amun al-muqabid. And bless those people who deceive the people to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his forgiveness. Because in fact, knowledge in Islam is something great. Knowledge in Islam requires studying the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It requires studying and memorizing something from Kitabullah and the Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in addition to that, it requires studying at the feet of the scholars in Islam, the scholars of Ahl Sunnah. And this requires patience and it requires sacrifice. And let's look at one of the Imam, the Imam of the Muhaddithin. Imam Bukhari, what he said in this regard. قال Bukhari, رحمه الله تعالى, باب رفع العلم وظهور الجهل. Imam Bukhari, رحمه الله تعالى, entitled the chapter in his book in Kitab al-Ilm, he titled one of the chapters, uh, the chapter of raising up or knowledge basically disappearing and the uh, and the and the ignorance and the spread of ignorance. Knowledge being removed and ignorance being becoming apparent and uh, spreading throughout the earth. Qala Imam Bukhari in this chapter he said, Waqala Rabi'a La Yanbadi Le Ahad Indahu Shaymin al Ilm and Yubi' Nafsu. Imam Bukhari said that he transmitted one of the statements of the Salaf of Rabi'ah. He said that it is not permissible for anyone who has something of knowledge, meaning that they're from Ahl al-Ilm, they're the people of knowledge, to waste his self. Shaykh Zayd al-Madkhali, Allah Ta'ala, he explained that this, is, this refers to, this athar on the salaf, it refers to the person who is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessed with something of knowledge. That, for example, they're a student of knowledge. And that it is not permissible for them to have shortcomings with this regard. Meaning that in the affair of spreading knowledge, that they should uh, do their best and strive their best to disseminate authentic knowledge and that also they should not withhold knowledge they should not uh, withhold knowledge from the people and also they should use but rather they should use their knowledge to refute ignorance and to spread knowledge amongst the people so that ignorance and the evil that comes with ignorance does not spread throughout the earth. This was the Shaykh, Hafidullah Ta'ala, uh, a brief summary of what the Shaykh uh, said regarding this effort. Then Imam Bukhari said, with the first hadith uh, in this, this bab, he said, Qala haddathana Imran ibn Musayra. Qala haddathana Abduwar an Abi Tiyah an Anas. Radiyallahu ta'anu qal. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن من إشرات الساعة أن يرفع العلم ويثبت الجهل ويشرب الخمر ويظهر الزنا. This is in Bukhari and is also uh, in Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that was narrated by Anas ibn Malik رضي الله تعالى عنه. And may Allah be pleased with all the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. In this hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said that from one of the signs of the day of judgment, that the hour is coming, is that knowledge will be taken away. Knowledge will be removed. And how is knowledge removed? Knowledge is removed by the dying off of the scholars, of the people, the true people of knowledge. Ahl al-ilm, ahl al-fiqh, 
Ahlul Basira, the people who have knowledge and insight into the religion. Why? Because they spent their lives serving the Sunnah of the Prophet They spent their lives serving Islam by studying the religion. And in this time, we've lost many giants. And of course, that doesn't include all the Salaf, all those who preceded us, Imams. Of course, first and foremost with the Sahaba, then beginning with the Tabi'een, with Tabi'at Tabi'een, and the Imams like Abu Hanifa, with Imams like uh, Imam Na uh, Malik, with Imam Shafi'i, with Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Rahimahullah Ta'ala Jameer, and Imam Nawawi, with Imam uh, ibn Taymiyyah, with Ibn Kathir, wa Kathir, 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 Ibn Hazm, wa Kathir, Min al Ulama of Ahl Sunnah. And so, one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take that knowledge and that ignorance will be affirmed in the earth. So those people who are spreading what they consider knowledge all throughout the internet, because the internet is free, anyone can post a video on YouTube, anyone can uh, start a website and a web group with any version, with any uh, thought, with any ideology that they want and uh, say that that is a part of Islam. However, that is impermissible in Islam. And in fact, those people are making the ignorance become more widespread. You have some people giving us their opinion why they believe Shia, uh, being Shia, is okay. Based upon their opinion, not based upon the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet You have videos about people uh, telling us about hijab and they show their wife, but yet they have no knowledge, they don't give you one ayat from the Qur'an or one athar or from the Salaf or one hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu or one statement of even the ulama this is when ignorance becomes fabid you know, ignorance becomes uh, firm in the land and this is the case that we see so be careful and fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala ayyuhal mufti are you a, 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 a sheikh of the internet? All those people who consider themselves scholars and the people raise them up and consider them scholars just because they have a web page, just because they quote one hadith or one ayat of the Quran and then they explain it however they want and they say that this is the truth and that is the truth. But we always have a measure, brothers and sisters. We always have a measurement, and that is based upon the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet And going back to the people of knowledge, the people of fiqh and basira and ilm, wa tawheed, wa sunnah, that we have to go back to them. We have to call the ulama. We have to know the ulama. We have to know who they are, and not just take from anyone, because his beard is long, his, his thawb is short, or maybe he doesn't even have a beard. Or maybe he has a Sufi circle and people are around him saying we have the bay'ah to our shaykh. And the shaykh is ignorant because the shaykh doesn't even know about Tawheed. He calls to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we have to be cautious of. This is what the Prophet sallallahu warned us against. So the Prophet sallallahu said this is from one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. He said, And yurfa al-alm wa yuthbit al-jahl And ignorance will be firm in the land. Wa yushrib al khamr and alcohol will be uh, become widespread. The people are drinking alcohol. What yabhar zina and that adultery and fornication will become widespread. And this, of course, we all see this as the case. We know this in the Muslim, in the non-Muslim lands. Of course, we see that we have uh, all of these these clubs where people actually go and they fornicate in the front of the people. That's become a trend wife swapping, uh, being on the down low, all of these other trends, it's become a trend that fahisha, that, that wickedness has become widespread. That's a sign of the day of judgment. And drinking alcohol is like nothing. You find Muslims even, some of them who even think it's lawful. They've gone so far away from the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they think it's modern now. I can drink. I can have a girlfriend. Uh, the Quran doesn't say I can't have a girlfriend. These are the kind of statements they say. Even some people go as far with their ignorance or it's just plain disbelief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they're rejecting the Qur'an and they're rejecting the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu in totality by saying that homosexuality is permissible in Islam. Absolutely not. This is an evil which is affirmed all throughout the Qur'an, especially in the, the, um, 
the, the stories of Lut and his people, they were guilty of this evil. But some people, out of ignorance, want to deceive the people and justify their desires by saying that no, it wasn't homosexuality, it was sodomy only. This is something uh, something that it is difficult to even begin to uh, express how ignorant and how evil that people have become in their, uh, their thought pattern in trying to justify their desires. Accept the fact, if you're a homosexual and you're a Muslim, make Toba to Allah. But don't try to justify what you're doing. Don't say, oh, we have a gay imam. We have a woman who leads the prayer here. We have a woman who gives the khutbah here. And the men pray with her. What kind of Islam is this? Where do you get this from the Quran? Where do you get this from the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do you find statements of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, or the tabi'in or itba'a tabi'in, and the sunnah of Islam? Do you find anything that resembles uh, these kind of uh, actions? Absolutely not. There's no authority for this in the religion of Islam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us to fear Him and not to be like those people who spread ignorance, but rather be of those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places benefit in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with al-nafin, al-skantayibu, or al mutaqabili Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya